Referring to it as, cow as cowboy caviar ultimately gives no credit to the Hispanic culture that the dish originated from, essentially then erasing the culture from the dish altogether, which obviously is just not right and is not what I intended to do. I'm going to- Ah, uh, guys, we're gonna have an interesting conversation today. We've done videos in the past about food and cultural appropriation, and it has come back into the rounds. Today, we're gonna be talking about a TikToker by the name of Bria Lemerand, hope I pronounced that right, in Cowboy Caviar. Let's get into it. guys, before we get into this episode today, I'd ask you to please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we post a new spicy video, keeping you up to date on what's happening in today's world. And in today's world, you can't make food dishes without knowing the exact origin of it, which culture created it, and when you make those food dishes, if you decide to post a picture or even a video on TikTok about it, you have to give credit. This is an issue that a young girl by the name of Bria Lemerand has fallen into because she's been creating something known as cowboy caviar. And a lot of people have a problem with her for it. Let me show you guys this recipe, even though it really doesn't matter what's truly in, what's truly in this stuff. Uh, and then we'll get into the heat that she's been receiving because of this. Look at that. Some peppers, beautiful. Let's skip ahead here. Some onion, how dare she? Some black beans, olives, corn, cheese, avocado, and a vinaigrette. Okay, Taylor, does this remind you of anything that she should have been crediting when making this cowboy caviar? All I know is you forgot to mention the biggest ingredient that she added to this, which is racism. <laughs> <laughs> racism and the cheese is white because it exemplifies her privilege it's the white privilege that she just sprinkles on the top mm. before just utterly erasing the culture she that thinks she's... it's the supreme ingredient it has <laughs> supremacy over all the other ones <laughs> unbelievable now i i see this girl's tiktoks on my for you page all the time because she's quite popular she has 1.8 million followers on tiktok and a lot of her videos are just her being a sweet little girl making cocktails in her house making different uh make, making different food dishes and stuff but apparently all of it is laced with white supremacy she posts this cowboy caviar and it is one of her staples of of the videos that she makes on her tiktok account and i can't believe we're even talking about this but she posts these fun little videos where she creates it and it's gone viral because so many people have decided to go and make this and you know they so they say i really like this dish it tastes great and i i love the way you did it in the video whatever who cares if you look at the top comment on on this video here what does it say they're really discovering pico de gallo <laughs> so all these left-leaning individuals and i don't even know that they're hispanic because so often when we bring race into these discussions it's white liberals and you guys know that that is the case uh by and large but so many people have been coming after this girl screaming at her saying you're just creating salsa you're stealing from hispanic culture you are creating pico de gallo how dare you as a white person act like you've discovered something and give something a name and act like oh my gosh i just stumbled on this recipe and i didn't know i stole it from the hispanics around me so this sweet girl and i mean very sweet girl at least uh, as as far as her videos show is being attacked incessantly on TikTok for creating a recipe. And if you go back and watch an old video that we did uh, reacting to a creator by the name of Sujia One, who essentially just goes on TikTok and roasts white people for making culturally appropriated dishes. So now Bria is in the heat of this. She's being called a cultural appropriator because she made something called cowboy caviar. And it all came to, to its peak as she posted an apology video on TikTok. And I'm gonna show you guys this. Let's react to it, this poor girl. A video talking about cowboy caviar and all of the different things that have been brought up about it. And I wanna start off the video first and foremost by saying I am so sorry to anyone and everyone that I offended by making- Pause. 
never apologize. And this is the the sad part of this is because she's so kind and you can tell that she's really just like a sweethearted girl that when people are, are angry at her, of course, she's going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. What did I do? And and part, part of this is probably a subscription to the idea of cultural appropriation and this sort of leftist terminology that you can steal from somebody's culture by creating food and making videos about it. And that's so sad to see to see these people go after somebody who's simply finding joy and sharing that joy with other people is just devastating. Like, leave her alone. Let her let her do her thing. And I know it's something petty like food, but I'm going to be petty and I'm going to respond to the videos and I'm going to talk about why this is wrong because hopefully somebody will see this and go, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to do that to somebody. I'm just going to leave them alone. Yeah, our friend uh, Will Witt just went viral on Reddit the other day uh, because of this video that basically just shows him in a sombrero going to uh, university and all the woke white kids are very offended by this. And then he goes to a Hispanic part of town and they're all like, oh, isn't that uh, you're so you're appreciating our culture. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, or at the very least, yeah. he's cute, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the people who are offended by this video that she's apologizing to. I wonder if any of them are like actually Hispanic people who are genuinely offended. I mean, I I don't wonder. Zero are <laughs> actually Hispanic people uh, who are offended that she's appropriating Pico de Gallo. It's yeah, all right. woke white virtue signaling liberals who are just trying to right. feel like they're this righteous person who's calling out this bad white supremacist. And it's just lazy. She has nothing to apologize for. She really doesn't. That's why yeah. you don't apologize to them. And if you are a Hispanic who watches her videos and it does upset you, please comment down below. I would love to meet you. I would love to meet you. Please let me know if there's one person who is Hispanic who is offended by this. And let let me let you guys know, you know, why we don't apologize is because they don't care. They don't care for your apology and it reinforces their behavior. It makes them feel emboldened to do it more because they go, oh, look. I screamed at this girl, I gave her a death threat, I told her about our cultural appropriation, and then she caved and she apologized. So I'm gonna go do that to more people. And it makes them feel good. Don't let them feel good. Let's continue watching. Making cowboy caviar, and I wanna say that was that was just never my intention to offend anybody or any culture. Um, but whether or not that was my intention or not, that's what ended up happening. So I'm so sorry. I didn't make the name. I'm not claiming to like own the recipe. It was created back in the 40s. It's just kind of something I grew up eating at different gatherings, like functions that I was at. And I remember Ugh. one night just being like, oh, I loved that cowboy caviar. I'm going to go make it on TikTok tomorrow. And, you know, that's what I did with no harmful intentions. But Look, you can just tell she's been crying. You can just hear it in her voice and see it in her eyes that this girl has been mulling over the comments that she's been getting and crying and just not knowing how to deal with it or, or what to say. You don't have to tell me a story about how you found the recipe. You don't have to tell me a story about where it originated. You don't have to tell me a story about where you made the name. I don't care if you got all these ingredients and said, you know what, I'm going to rename this thing and put it on TikTok. I truly don't care. And really, nobody else should. It is ridiculous to put somebody through this for such a simple thing. And you can say, oh, I'm so petty. Why are you talking about a girl who makes food on TikTok and her getting bullied? Because it means something. You know, when we talk about say bigger instances of cultural appropriation Let, let's let's scale it because this is just food let's scale it up to something like a particularly special sign of of privilege and power indian headdress that somebody appropriates and starts wearing and dancing around and doing stupid stupid stuff with it and saying you know look i'm, I'm a native american i'm a native american okay that's far harsher than something like this. And people would pounce on that in an instant. But to pounce on somebody who's just making food that they like, it shows you how deeply this is embedded in our society. The smallest things that you do now are going to be called out. You will be ridiculed and you will be met with the full force that is wokeism for simply making a dish. And that's a problem because it means that we've lost our levity on the situation. It means that we can't take things and, and, and analyze what the intent of a person is. It means that we're not looking as to whether or not somebody is truly trying to offend us or if they've just stumbled onto something and that's what they're doing. Nobody cares anymore. It's like they're coming down with you with the, the full hammer of the, of the woke law when you would do anything, the smallest little thing. Yeah, this whole phenomenon of just policing other people mm -hmm. uh, with for political correctness is people are, I think, just the average person is just 
so tired of it. Amal and I were talking to a, journal, a mainstream journalist the other day who said, you know, the place where I see conservatives winning is that people are just fed up with this uh, this policing that the far left is doing with yep. everyone's uh, language, with what you're allowed to say, what food you're allowed to eat now. Like, am I going to have to start seeing people issuing apology videos for like getting a burrito at Chipotle right. and they were caught on camera? It's like, is that offensive now because mm-hmm. Chipotle appropriates and mainstreams Hispanic food or right. Mexican food? food or whatever like where does it end and that's the thing there is no like limiting principle to this Mm -hmm. and as you say it comes down to your intent like yeah is it wrong to like make a caricature of someone's culture and then with the intent to mock you know put on a show to mock them yeah, I mean, I guess that's it's not that's, a great thing to do. Yeah, that's in poor taste, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, but I mean, you could say it still falls under free speech or whatever. Exactly. And that's also different, by the way, from like a stand-up comedian who's dishing it out to everybody mm-hmm. and acknowledging the existence of certain stereotypes that are associated with genders or cultures or whatever it may be. Right. That that that's just inherently funny because people know certain things are true about certain people or and groups of people, and those are there's nothing wrong with acknowledging those and playing off of those. Um, and but this is just like. A, it's it's not even just taking things too seriously. It's literally just sucking the joy out of life so that you can virtue signal. That's all it yeah. is. And I can't imagine people watch this and feel good about themselves, but there has to be people who do. Like, yay, we got her to make this video. We got her to apologize. How insane. Let's keep watching. Full intentions, but I do 100% see how cultural appropriation comes into play here. Um, ultimately, Cowboy Caviar was inspired and it's, very similar to a lot of pico de gallos, a lot of salsas, a lot of ceviches. <laughs> and Clown world. There's a lot of people saying like, oh, it's so different. But at the end of the day, it was inspired by those dishes. Referring to it as, cow- as cowboy caviar ultimately gives no credit to the Hispanic culture that the dish originated from, essentially then erasing the culture from the dish altogether, which oh, obviously is just not gracious. right and is not what I intended to do. I'm going to be so much more mindful of where I'm getting recipes from and the culture behind recipes that I'm recreating and sharing and making sure to give credit where the credit is due. Um, Again, I'm really, really, really sorry to the people that I offended with this. You shouldn't be. I just can't stress it enough. The The worst word that I'm hearing in this entire video is sorry. You should not feel sorry for the things that you're doing, especially just so as a note, you guys saw that recipe. It's not salsa. It's like, it's certainly not. And you can say it's inspired. Everything's inspired by something, ladies and gentlemen. Am I supposed to every time I make pasta go, oh, I, I'd like to thank the Italians very quickly before I eat this. <laughs> I'm like, like, what am I? <laughs> Like, McDonald's what? just, you know, say a little prayer in German, thanking uh, the, the, you know, the Hamburg German right. origins. Like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to thank, I'm not going to thank India every time I eat tikka masala. I'm not going to do it. I'm really not. And you shouldn't be expected to do that because this is the world we live in. You go to the grocery store, you buy your food, you make whatever you want and you eat it and consume it. And if you want to make a video about it and put it on the internet, you can do exactly that. And it's not like she went and got all these ingredients and was like, Oh, today I'm going to make a salsa, but I'm not going to call it salsa. I'm going to call it cowboy caviar and I'm going to make yeah. millions of followers off of this recipe. <laughs> like, <laughs> so guys, I just made up this brand new food that no one's ever seen before. Right. It's where you chop up tomatoes and vegetables that have some spice to them and right. blend it into a paste. And, you know, what should I call it, guys? And so no one's ever heard of this. Like, no, if she tried to do that, no one would fall for it. No. So, so the, what she's doing is not even close to that, and you're still offended. Gosh, it's so ridiculous. And I'm petty. I'm petty. So I went and Googled this because she was like, oh, it's from the 1940s. It legit is a whole, it's a whole ass thing. It's a whole separate thing. Texas caviar, also known as cowboy caviar, was created in the 1940s. It even credits the individual who made it. This is Helen Corbett. Helen Corbett you're creating a lot of problems right now <laughs> in, in the 21st century, Helen. Okay, I'm going to need you to take accountability for your actions. We're all going to have to go to the grave of Helen Corbett and, and put a sign up that says cultural appropriator as she's stolen a recipe from Hispanics. This is, this is where we're at in this day and age. This is how petty you are and, and petty other people are. And it's like... I can't imagine, you know, this is why young people are so scared. 
They're so scared to be forward. They're so scared to talk about what they believe. They're so scared to do anything. God forbid you make the wrong recipe on TikTok and make a silly little video where you put music over it because a bunch of people might start sending you death threats and calling you a racist. This is the threshold for offending people now. Lower and lower and lower and lower. It doesn't matter what you do. And what what is sad is, is the, it's the apology. It's the reinforcement. Because now, okay, the threshold was making uh, something that looks like salsa, okay? But she apologized. So guess what? Threshold's lower now. What's the next thing? Who even knows what the next thing is? But it's gonna just keep inching itself down. That's cowboy caviar, you guys. <laughs> I don't have any other words for this. I think that sums up my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I can't help but think that, like, it is, it's so funny because it is such a trivial thing that, okay, a TikToker made a video. Mm -hmm. But the fact that people are getting offended and that this is becoming, like, a, uh, it, it's a real issue in our culture just reflects how the standard way of looking at the world is shifting to this oppressor and oppressed framework that yep. is really traces back to this a marxist worldview um and i know that's like going way deep on a video about cow cowboy caviar but yeah. ultimately it's like are you on the side of the oppressors the white supremacist patriarchal mm -hmm. uh, hegemony that is, has imposed itself on society historically or do you want to be among um, on the side of the oppressed and if you want to be on the right side of history then you better be a person who apologizes and obeys all the rules of political correctness because if you don't then you're just as bad as uh, the native slaughtering Christopher Columbus and uh, you're on the wrong side of history and you're not one of us you're not right. accepted you're not going to be mainstream you're not going to have all the opportunities in culture and you know and, and you pass your dei and have your good social credit score i mean that's all this stuff is is ultimately connected in that oppressor oppressor yeah. oppressor oppressed framework mm -hmm. and uh i think the only thing to do is say i reject the way you're even framing this entire thing yeah i made a freaking recipe i put it on tiktok you enjoy it if you want if you don't F off. Like, right. And, you know how baller yourself. that would have been? You know how baller that would have been if she like got all these death threats or whatever and she set up her camera? She's like, what's up, guys? Today we're making cowboy caviar. That's right. I said it. Cowboy caviar. I did not appropriate the dish. I did not steal it from anybody. And here's how you make the recipe. That would, oh, baller. And people would have been like, hell yeah, girl. But guess what? This still got 442,000 thousand likes so we're like we're not talking about it because it's something that's totally insignificant you know millions of people have watched this video of her apologizing and her commenting on it and talking about it and it actually has become like a sort of pop culture commentary piece because of this girl random girl on tiktok and it's gonna be happening more and more and more as we delve into this ideology guys i'm interested to hear your thoughts on this comment this down below is this cultural appropriation did she steal pico de gallo and in salsa and ceviche and just put a little white name on it that she didn't make up you guys let me know down in the comments below and how would you have responded to people coming at your throat for making a recipe like this and posting it on TikTok? let me know what your next video would have been in response to that because mine would have been remaking it all over again and calling them out so yeah leave that comment down below also if you enjoyed this video or you found it insightful or maybe we found something deeper in a story that you've been seeing just scrolling on TikTok, please like subscribe click the notification bell to be notified every single time we post a video for you guys and if you'd like to follow our podcast on podcast apps you can go to google play spotify apple Podcasts, and please leave us a five-star review so that other people get to hear what we have to say we are dedicated to taking these pop culture moments and giving you our perspective on them hopefully bringing some levity to the situation and explaining it and spelling it all out for you. So give me your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Is there a point that I didn't make that you wish I did? Let me know down below and we'll see you guys in the next video.